The following production is presented by League Info Site and the Credit Union Broadcast Experience, QTV. Thank you for joining me for this edition of the CU Compliance Connection. I'm Sean Wolbert, and today we're going to cover a controversial topic, FinCEN's Guidance and Bank Secrecy Act requirements for marijuana-related businesses. The FinCEN guidance has provided clarity to industry questions on member due diligence expectations and reporting requirements for financial institutions providing services to marijuana businesses. The guidance allows credit unions to provide services to marijuana related businesses in a manner consistent with their obligations for, to the Bank Secrecy Act and requirements to know your member and to report possible criminal activity. Currently, 20 states and Washington, D.C. allow the sale of marijuana in some form. Five states have enacted laws that legalize medical marijuana with a physician's prescription, and Maryland also passed a law favorable to marijuana. However, it does not legalize its use. Throughout the FinCEN guidance, we are reminded that the Controlled Substances Act makes it illegal under federal law to manufacture, distribute, or dispense marijuana. Additionally, the Cole Memo reiterates Congress's determination that marijuana is a dangerous drug and that the illegal distribution and sale of marijuana is a serious crime that provides a significant source of revenue to large-scale criminal enterprises, gangs, and cartels. The FinCEN guidance clarifies how credit unions can provide financial services to marijuana-related businesses while maintaining their BSA obligations. In general, the decision to open, close, or refuse any particular account or relationship should be made while considering a number of factors, including the business's objectives, an evaluation of the risks associated with offering a particular product or service, and its capacity to manage those risks effectively. Vincent points out that thorough member due diligence is a critical aspect of making this assessment. In providing service to marijuana related businesses, the credit union is required to conduct member due diligence that includes verifying with the appropriate state authorities whether the business is duly licensed and registered, reviewing the license application and related documentation submitted by the business for obtaining a state license to operate its marijuana related business, requesting from state licensing and enforcement authorities available information about the business and related parties, developing an understanding of the normal and expected activity for the business, including the types of products to be sold, and the type of customer that's going to be served. Is it going to be medical or recreational use? An ongoing monitoring of publicly available sources for adverse information about the business and the related parties to the business. You're required to do ongoing monitoring for suspicious activity, including any of the red flags described in this guidance, and refreshing information obtained as a part of member due diligence on a periodic basis and commensurate with the risks. Now I'll be able to tell you that in Michigan, because we're from Michigan, our state is not providing information on medical marijuana businesses unless they do a lot of paperwork and then the state still isn't sure if they're, gonna, if they're going to provide that paperwork. So although we are a state that has the ability to provide medical marijuana to people, um, as far as financial services, being able to provide services, it's extremely difficult because the state will not give us the required documentation that FinCEN's new rules require for having an account. As a part of required Bank Secrecy Act member due diligence, the credit union should also consider whether the marijuana-related business violates one of the Cole Memo priorities for the state law. The credit union should consider if the marijuana-related business adheres to the following provisions of the Cole Memo. Preventing the distribution of marijuana to minors. Preventing revenue from the sale of marijuana from going to criminal enterprises, gangs, and cartels. 
preventing the diversion of marijuana from states where it is legal under state law in some form to other states, preventing state authorized marijuana activity from being used as a cover or pretext for the trafficking of other illegal drugs or other illegal activity, preventing violence and the use of firearms in the cultivation and distribution of marijuana, preventing drug driving and exasperation of other adverse public health consequences associated with marijuana use, preventing the growing of marijuana on public lands and the attendant public safety and environmental dangers posed by marijuana production on public lands, and finally, preventing marijuana possession or use on federal property. The credit union needs to follow BSA reporting requirements in regards to the marijuana-related business activity. The credit union must report currency transactions in connection with marijuana-related businesses in the same way that they would any other context, consistent with the existing regulations and with the th same thresholds that currently apply. The obligation to file a SAR is unaffected by any state law that legalizes marijuana activity. And I want to say that again you still have to file a SAR because FinCEN has stated in their guidance that any type of marijuana activity is illegal. So if you're offering these accounts, there are new SAR filing requirements. And this is consistent with FinCEN's regulations when it knows or suspects, when you know or suspect that there's a reason to suspect the transaction is conducted, attempted by, at, or through a financial institution that involves funds derived from illegal activity, or is an attempt to disguise funds derived from illegal activity, is designed to evade regulations promulgated under the BSA, or lacks a business or apparently lawful purpose. Because federal law prohibits the distribution and sale of marijuana, financial transactions involving a marijuana-related business generally involve funds derived from illegal activity. Therefore, the credit union is required to file a SAR on activity involving a marijuana-related business, including those duly licensed under state law. In accordance with the new guidance and FinCEN's suspicious activity reporting requirements, keeping to those related thresholds. Credit unions are required to file suspicious activity reports to assist law enforcement in monitoring their activity. There are new classifications of SARs that must be used when reporting marijuana-related activity. The first of those is the Marijuana Limited SAR Filing. A credit union providing financial services to a marijuana-related business that reasonably believes, based on its members' due diligence, that it does not implicate one of the Cole Memo priorities, and we covered those earlier in this presentation, or violate a state law you should file the Marijuana Limited SAR. The content of the SAR should be limited to identifying the information of the subject and related parties, addresses of the subject and related parties, the fact that the filing institution is filing the SAR solely because the subject is engaged in marijuana-related business, and the fact that no additional suspicious activity has been identified. Credit unions need to use the term marijuana limited in the narrative section. The second new SAR filing is the marijuana priority SAR filing. A financial institution filing a SAR on a marijuana related business that it reasonably believes, based on its member due diligence, implicates one of the Cole Memo priorities or violates state law. So they're not following the Cole Memo or they're violating state law they need to file a Marijuana Priority SAR. The content of the SAR should include comprehensive details in accordance with existing regulations and guidance. Details that are particularly relevant to law enforcement in this context include identifying information on the subject and related parties, addresses of the subject and related parties, details regarding the enforcement priorities the financial institution believes have been implicated, and the dates, amounts, and other relative details of the financial tra transactions involved in that suspicious activity. Credit unions need to use the term marijuana priority in the narrative section to help law enforcement distinguish these SARs. 
Finally, you have the marijuana termination SAR filing. If a credit union deems it is necessary to terminate their relationship with a marijuana-related business in order to maintain an effective anti-money laundering compliance program, it has to file a SAR and note in the narrative the basis for the termination. And you need to include the term marijuana termination, which must be noted again in that narrative section. The FinCEN requirements were effective when they were published February 14th. They had an immediate effect date. If your credit union provides services to a marijuana-related business, you will want to ensure that all the requirements of the guidance are met. Thank you for joining me here at the CU Compliance Connection and stay tuned for future broadcasts on issues that affect your credit union. We're here to help you at the CU Compliance Connection by InfoSight, only on Cube TV. Thanks for watching the number one compliance program for the credit union community. Stay tuned.